Hi guys, Sci-Fi Recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm gonna explain a 2022 Russian science fiction and thriller movie called Project Gemini. The movie begins with the news report showing the Earth's ecosystem is being destroyed by an unidentified deadly virus. Several efforts from world reputable scientists have been made, but none of them were successful. Because of that, Natural disasters occurrence increases significantly and everyone predicts that Earth will be uninhabitable in a short period of time. Meanwhile, Dr. Stephen Ross, who is leading the Project Gemini or Earth 2.0 project, and his fellow researchers just discovered an ancient extraterrestrial object named the Sphere, which they believe can be the life creator, and an unidentified engine. Project Gemini's team manages to duplicate these alien objects with the same exact materials and discover a new inhabitable planet, called Tess, with the machine as it allows humans to do deep space travel. Not only that, they have successfully cracked several codes to utilize the orb since it has its own language and plan to create a new home for mankind with it. Steven and his team, consisting of Leona, Peter, David, and Mayor Ryan Connell, are going to do an expedition to test to directly witness the planet's condition and install the sphere there. Steve's wife, Amy, tries to prevent her husband from going away, but she is too late as the spacecraft has departed. While Steve and Peter are checking the engine, suddenly something pops out from the sphere, indicating that they are not alone. After traveling in space for a while, the crews finally are ready for the jump and commence the jump procedure. However, something goes wrong during the jump and they eventually arrive at an unknown part of the galaxy. Steve blames Peter and kicks him out of the cockpit, accusing him for not following the jump protocol, but Peter insists that he had checked everything before they jumped. They are fully trapped in the galaxy and cannot jump back since they cannot find familiar landmarks and data to describe their current position. On the other side, Peter turns off the surveillance camera and decides to examine the engine alone. Not long after, the spacecraft reports an object is approaching and turns out it is Peter's dead body. The entire crew becomes panic and hopeless. David believes that Peter commits suicide after he has failed the mission. After grieving, they realize that there is a nearby planet, which turns out to be a much better subject for terraforming than Tess was. Steve, as the mission leader, decides that they will try to explore the planet, but Ryan and Richard disagree because it is too risky and the planet is still unstable since it is a young planet. But their opinions don't matter as Steve is the one who makes the final decision and the other crews have to comply. The docking sequence is requested and Ryan, Steve, and several crews head closer to the planet. After passing through the rough weather, the field crew managed to land on the planet. The scene briefly jumps to a moment when Steve gives his wife a beautiful jewelry made of Sphere's material. Despite landing safely, Richard reports that the plane is out of fuel, meaning that they can't get back into the mothership and are trapped there. They find a suitable cave and immediately prepare for taking out the Sphere into the cave. Upon arrival at the cave, they begin the installation of the Sphere. After that, they return to the plane. Meanwhile, Richard, who is alone in the mothership, discovers a transparent gel and coincidentally finds a recording of Peter before he was somehow expelled from the ship. That evening, he tells the other crews about the recording, revealing that Peter was killed by an unidentified being, not suicide. He also discovers that the life being or so called the Trojan horse was coming out from the sphere and is currently on the crew's plane. Ryan realizes that Steve is hiding something about the sphere and urges him to tell the truth to the entire crew. The scene moves to Steve examining the sphere on Earth where he suddenly comes across an unidentified human being. He refuses to discuss the anomaly he found earlier and walks away. It is revealed that David's daughter passed away just before the expedition and Steve initially suggests he withdraws his intention to join the journey, but he insists since he is the one who has the best understanding about the project, alongside with Steve. Back to the plane, Steve asks David to join him quietly back to the sphere. At first he refuses as Ryan is now the one who is taking control, but he changes his mind after Steve tells him that they are humanity's last hope to defeat the emerging virus on Earth. Upon arrival, they adjust the setting of the sphere when the Trojan is slowly approaching them. David panics and starts shooting the sphere which deactivates it. They immediately run back and barely make it to the plane. Afterward, Ryan confronts them, warns Steve that he no longer has the right to make decisions. Suddenly, the plane alarm is triggered, indicating that the Trojan manages to break into the plane. Leona, who is still confused about the emergency situation, walks through the corridor and accidentally spots the Trojan in the lab. Fortunately, she still makes it to the control room. All crew members have gathered at the control room where the Trojan cannot break in. Since the plane's main generator was broken, they lose contact with the plane and are unable to access the camera. 
Steve volunteers himself to connect all the electronic devices to the backup generator in order to restore the security camera and communications. After a breathtaking moment, Steve manages to restore the plane's power and gets back safely to the room after being rescued by Ryan. They plan a strategy to lure the Trojan outside the plane where Steve will be the main decoy. He manages to temporarily trap the Trojan in a chamber while the others prepare to unlock the airlocks. After all airlocks are open, Leona manually releases the Trojan, which immediately runs towards Steve, who has been waiting outside the plane near the engine nozzles. Frank tries to distract the Trojan for a while until the engine is turned, but it is too late. Steve retreats to the ship while the Trojan gets back to the cave. Lucky for them, they manage to collect one of its tentacles. The scene jumps back again where Amy urges Steve to walk out from the expedition mission, but he insists even after she reveals that she is pregnant. On the other side, she is also developing a vaccine for the virus. Since then, their relationship is getting worse and Amy is unwilling to talk to him again. She throws away the bracelet and walks away. The next day, Steve examines the tentacle in a fragment. He finds out that they were made from the same material as the sphere while David is lying weak after being infected by the virus. He eventually learns that the tentacle is a transporter. Ryan has lost his trust to Steve and decides to lock him in the lab. He continues his experiment with the tentacle and the fragment, and discovers that all this time they didn't move in space, but they time travel to the past, or to be exact, traveled to 4 billion years ago. Richard then realizes that the planet in front of them is actually planet Earth. Steve states that the fragment is the exact same piece as the one he gave to Amy. He also figures out that the sphere on Earth now and the one they installed are also the exact same sphere, but just in a different time. Since they cannot save people on Earth, Steve plans to tell Amy about the virus and indirectly help her to create a vaccine. He knows that the sphere will remain at the cave until that day and also he will give the fragment to her. Thus, he will write a message for her in the fragment, telling her how to connect the sphere. He is confident that Amy will miss him, and eventually will come back to the bracelet and find the code. Meanwhile, Ryan, who still doesn't know the truth, plans to blow up the sphere. Richard now supports him and unlocks the lab, urging him to reach Ryan in person and explain everything. He suggests they lure the Trojan into the plane and use the bomb to destroy it. However, David suddenly shows up and shoots everyone. He has lost his mind, stating that no one has to suffer since no one was being created. Steve manages to shoot him and force him away. After that, Steve activates the bomb and lures the Trojan into the plane with a flare. The beast arrives, finally revealing itself, and gets Steve cornered, but he still somehow manages to escape. He is then confronted by David, who is impaled by the Trojan. He eventually flees from the plane just before the bomb explodes and blow up the entire plane. Steve becomes the only survivor, but he only has one hour since his oxygen tank was shot. In the middle of the storm, he immediately walks back to the cave and reactivates the sphere. Meanwhile on present Earth, Amy, who finds the bracelet with the code written on it, immediately runs to the sphere and successfully activates the sphere. The sphere allows her to make contact with Steve, who informs her the equation and the ingredients needed to make the vaccine. Before he disappears, Steve apologizes and expresses his feelings for the last time. At the end of the movie, Amy gives birth to the child and manages to develop the vaccine. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.